Thank you, Mr. Ken. Would you start us out yeah, with your Bible verse yes. and your thoughts? Oh, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, today I have a reading from the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 3, verse 7 and 8 in NLT. It reads, Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. I'd like to say, trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. Acknowledge the Lord in everything. Fear the Lord. Turn your back on evil. Good health and refreshed knowledge are normal results of good relationship with the Lord. Continue to eat a proper human diet. Look out for each other. We are, learn we are all learning from each other about how to heal our bodies. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. Thank you. And that is so true. I think we all learn a little something each week from each other. So, um, just keep playing in the food, Emily. <laughs> I will. So, Ken, I really like the way you said that because um, when you pointed out the the verse, it made me think of how often we get stuck in our own pride. We think, oh, this is a really good idea. This is this and that and the other. And, and we start, we, we kind of praise ourselves, even if it's unintentional. And then by doing that, we are not lifting up God. So we're not going to be listening to him. And if we're not listening, we're not going to receive true wisdom. We'll, we'll make a whole lot more mistakes and we'll be bumbling fools. So I'm as le at least I will be. Um, so to me, you know, I have to, I like verses that humble me and say, hey, that may have been a good idea, but remember where good ideas come from and give credit where credit is due and, and, and let, let your focus be on God and not, you know, not the wise words of people. So, yeah, that's good. And this is the way we can learn from each other. Also. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know that God might give you something that I can, and, and some insight and, you know, instead of me trying to rely on my own self all the time, I can listen to others and humble myself and oh, everybody's got a better idea or a good idea or something that I can learn from. Excuse me. I've been breathing the, this hot pepper stuff all day. <laughs> and I just flipped over the sheets. So, you know what? You guys aren't eating all these sweets. Let me get something else out to go with your, your what is it, the green board? Oh, yeah. Chartreuse three board. Chartreuse three board. <laughs> Chartreuse three board. Asparagus, cucumber. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Whew, Ken, you don't get another piece. Oh, that's good stuff. Good Wait stuff. till you get a piece of I that. made a roll up. It's got cream cheese, bacon, I don't know what other kinds of seasonings mm -hmm. in it. Okay. And the little green wrap up is my pickled banana peppers. That, On the outside? Yes. Wow. That I did. And so I pureed it all up, made it into a liquid, freeze dried it, and then I was able to roll it Isn't with the cream good? cheese, etc., on it. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. That's what it reminded yeah. me of was a fruit leather. It was like a roll up fruit. Yeah. Leather. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> when she had me that, I go, ooh, this ought to be good as a roll up. <laughs> she had those strips next to it. I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And all I, all that was is my the pickled peppers that we had put up the fall of twenty two. Just pureed them, dried them, and turned it. Up. So, um, it's the best Emily to get a dehydrator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was texting her the other day, but <laughs> so okay. Um, yeah, I found them quite interesting. I felt really accomplished. Even though I didn't know I was going to accomplish that. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't what I was planning on, but I thought, why grind this up more? Let's see you. I like oops. Oops and it did make a nice little green roll up. Um, so what we're going to watch tonight is our friend Dustin. Um, Yay! Yeah! 
him talking about admitting he's an addict. And um, Dustin, oh, his shirt yeah. is a Dustin shirt. And, um, anyways, <laughs> he's one of our faves. He lives in Indianapolis, and him and his wife are planning on coming to one of our Thursday night groups. Thank you for clicking cool. on so, My name is Dustin, and this video is one that's very difficult for me to have to make. Bear I have to admit that I have <laughs> a food good. addiction. What is a food addiction? Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Also, that I'm not a healthcare professional, doctor, or nurse, or anything like that. So don't take anything that I'm saying in this video as medical advice. Food addiction is basically loosely translated to not being able to control yourself when it comes to highly palatable foods, sugary foods, <laughs> chips, salty, and fatty foods, basically anything in the center aisle of the grocery store. And one thing that I want to say about mm. myself and food addiction is it leaves you feeling very helpless, hopeless, and in my case, basically feeling like I was going to end up like my mom in an early grade. So I think it's very important that I make this video so if any of you out there are dealing or struggling with any of these things, then you know that it is possible to overcome. So hopefully my journey in this story may be of some help to you. should probably start with some early life. I was a very skinny kid. My family was very loving. And like most families, they showed their love with food. They wanted to try to fatten me up, if you will. Uh, put some meat on my bones, they thought I was too scared. Compound that over many years, me getting into elementary school, going through elementary school, I did just that, gained a lot of weight. You know, being heavy is never easy. And that this got worse in middle school. By the time I got to middle school, I was wearing two X t-shirts, sweatpants because regular clothes felt like they didn't fit me correctly. It was the early 90s. I didn't really know much about big and tall and such like that. And we grew up poor. So a lot of that wasn't really an option. Uh, I really felt, I really felt that if I continued to get bigger, that I wouldn't be able to find clothes anymore because I was already wearing a two X, and that's the biggest that most of the stores carried, as far as I was concerned. Again, like I said, I grew up poor. Uh, we would shop at Aldi's before it was the bougie place it is today. And I also said that I was afraid that I would end up like my mom. And my mom was a bigger woman my entire life. Uh, a lot of health issues, type 2 diabetic. As I got older into adulthood, she had strokes, multiple heart attacks, and in 2013, she passed away. At that point, I was pretty much certain that that was going to be my fate. So I had already been through lots of things, you know, gained a lot of weight. Even beyond all of that, I had gained weight throughout my life, continued to gain weight. I would like a lot of people, turn to food for stress, celebration, happy, sad. I didn't turn to alcohol or anything like that. If I had a bad day, I would go and eat myself silly. Most evenings, I would eat till I could barely move. I never really quite felt full or satiated is the better word I could say. I felt full, I was stuck, but I was never quite satisfied or satiated. I could fill up on all the dinner that I wanted and still want to eat that bowl of ice cream. I never felt satisfied, and I think it all came down to the type of foods that I was eating. Over time, I knew that I was getting bigger and bigger. I, at high school, I was wearing 42-inch pants below the belly, you know. Uh, that was the biggest size pants that they carried in the fashionable Jinkos, you know what I'm saying, that I wore in the late, mid to late 90s. And over time, I got to the point where I was buying 50-inch pants under the belly, mind you, and 5X t-shirts. So it was no secret that I was getting to be very large and my eating habits were to blame. You'll oftentimes hear people say, if you want to lose weight, you need to eat less and move more. You know, less of this and more of this, you know. Well, that's all well and good, but if you don't feel satiated with anything that you eat, then how can you eat less if you are constantly trying to fill that void? I tried eating salads and eating all kinds of stuff like that, rice and fish, but I was never full. I was never satiated, and I didn't know why. I was trying to follow the guidelines. I was trying to do what they were telling me to do, but I never felt full. I just got bigger and bigger. Now, I was eating a lot of crap, too. I was eating Oreos and ice cream and all that stuff. We were eating a lot of macaroni and cheese, and we were eating frozen pizzas and going to Taco Bell and doing all the things that you're not supposed to do. 
But I had tried to lose weight the right way, eating salads, going to the gym, and killing myself in the gym five days a week. And none of that ever seemed to work. And fast forward till I was in my early 30s, I was uh, finally talked into getting an umbilical hernia repaired by my wife. She's an RN. She told me that I needed to get that repaired. It was getting, the skin around the end of it was getting really thin. And I knew it was something that I needed to get taken care of. I was also going in to see about getting a CPAP, which is a breathing machine for night when you sleep, if you have sleep apnea. I was sleeping terribly, waking up in the middle of the night multiple times a night, gasping for air. Um, that's definitely not something to help make you healthy. So I was in the process of getting those two things taken care of. And I go to the doctor and I step on the scale. I'm 421 pounds. And that'll hit you in the face like a sledgehammer. Even more so than the issues that I was facing. I was, like I said, buying bigger clothes, 5X t-shirts, 50-inch pants. I was already dealing with other things that you don't talk about. You know, things like I was no longer able to use the downstairs bathroom in our house. I had to go upstairs and anytime I needed to use the bathroom where I had to sit down. I had to be very careful in the bathroom. There were the stalls that I used at my job. If I would go to the restroom and they were full, I had to go to different floors and hopefully, you know, make it on time. Because in all this, there was a lot of issues with all of that, all kinds of digestive issues I was having. So the eating compounded the weight, the weight compounded other things. I was dealing with, you know, diabetes and all of these things. I was tired all the time, obviously. Sleep apnea doesn't help that. I was struggling to stay awake during the day. I would have, I would just crash and I didn't know what to do. And in the process of getting these things taken care of and getting my hernia repaired, we decided against weight loss surgery and decided to try low carb. Trying to do anything we could to help get my weight down, get, you know, get myself on the right path. Again, I was having the surgeries. CPAP, I was trying to go and take care of my health for the first time in a long time and not really sure what low carb was. We stumbled upon keto, a general practitioner of mine that was helping us in the surgeries of the CPAP and all that stuff and mentioned ketosis, did not elaborate. And really, this was a last ditch effort for me. This was my last hope, you know, a Hail Mary. Because if this didn't work, then I was destined to go get some sort of weight loss surgery. And I really didn't want to do that. Well, there's so many complications, and that's not something for this video. That's another video. But anyway, we started doing it, and it was very difficult at first. I must admit, you know, breaking that sugar barrier, that sugar addiction, and cutting up sugars and refined grains and starches, and you're just basically going into meat, eggs, and such. And it's a little more complicated to them. I'm trying to simplify it for this video. But, you know, over time, over, over the course of a couple of weeks, I started noticing that I wasn't crashing, I wasn't foggy, I was starting to lose weight, I was losing about 10 pounds a month at the time, and most importantly, I was able to control my hunger. I wasn't binge eating large amounts of food and going to get ice cream, I wasn't doing any of that. I was having my dinner my coffee in the morning, and I was good. And for the first time, I was able to find satiety. And satiety is, again, so important. Because that's one of the, in my opinion, one of the major factors that causes food addiction is you're not able to find satiety in all the junk food, all the chips and cookies and burritos and all the things, fast food and all that stuff. You're just not able to find satiety. Satiety is so very important. Because if you never feel full, you're never able to stop eating. And then your insulin can't lower, and your body can't do what it needs to do. So that's a high level look at kind of what keto is. I have other videos on that if you're interested. Again, like I said, this is a difficult video for me to make just again because I'm saying that I'm a food addict. I still have slip ups. I still sometimes will stop in a McDonald's when I shouldn't and get some chicken nuggets or something like that, or I'll be at the grocery store and pick up some food that I shouldn't. Or I'll have almost slip-ups. One day I was at the grocery store, and I had a really stressful day, and I was getting into my car, putting groceries away, and I looked at was a McDonald's, and it took everything in me not to go to that McDonald's. But I was able to control myself, and I'm able to control myself more often than I'm not. So with that, 
If you found this video by any means helpful, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling helpless, I hopefully that you'll gain some kind of information that's helpful to you in your journey. Leave a message in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you struggle, if you had any of these issues, and uh, we can talk about it. I do lives multiple times a week, so stop by and we can talk. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, maybe consider becoming a member, and I will see you next time. Today I'm here at Sage Hill Farm. We won't go into the farming and the gardening ones <laughs> that we're trying to learn from too. But um, I know I've been really fighting addiction this week. And it's not that I'm feeling neglected. I think it's just the old habits of eating away concerns and worries and everything that's going on I just like well, you've had uh, a lot of stress you know yeah. so um, turn to food for that comfort yeah because that's what I've always done and um, so to find and I know in working through this the emotional hunger the head hunger above the neck hunger versus below the neck hunger um, not covering up issues I'm dealing with in my life, be it, you know, personal, family, health. It's just easy to want to revert back. And I'm really glad we don't have garbage food in the house. Because after almost three years, I would have been a lot more tempted to turn to garbage. I don't know what kind of garbage food, but a garbage food. Uh, it's not like I'm just going, oh, I got to have Lay's potato chips, you know. It would have just been something to cram in my fat face. So, um, and I know Andrew, he struggles with his chocolate addictions. Yeah. Ken yeah. struggles with the chocolate <clears throat> addiction. So. It's with, not just chocolate, but. Yeah. 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 With all that you're going through with an upcoming move and all this major stuff in your life, how are you dealing with admitting ah, I'm an addict? <laughs> it's weird because like I'm watching watching the video and I'm like, man, I didn't know. Just didn't know. Yeah, what Just triggers us? Yeah, I, I just didn't know I was addicted to food the way that I I now realize. I mean, it's like watching that right now is even more of an eye opener to me than I realized. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm addicted to chocolate and that kind of thing, but no, no. Uh, <clears throat> the power went out today, and so I don't normally get breakfast, but I was just like. Frustrated, I spilled milk all over the floor. It was a, it was a long morning <laughs> to start the day off, and um, and so I'm just like, all right, I'm just gonna get some breakfast, get out of the house, you know, and ordered egg and cheese omelet and a mushroom bacon burger, no potatoes, no bread. I put a little ketchup on it, but I mean, compared to the old me, like yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I went to come. You did. Yeah. Um, but it's just like it's seeing all the food on other people's plates that they were bringing by, and the waffles, and, and that triggered you to and, want. And I'm just like, wow! I can't believe how much I'm full from what I just ate, but how much I wanted to get more of the other stuff that just wasn't, it was, it was from the head up thought, you know, completely. So I paid and got out of there as quick as I could. And just 
but it just, I didn't, I didn't know. Just, I'm learning today. Like, really, how much I'm addicted to food. Yeah. I, addicted to carbs. I was going to say, no, yeah. that would be really, you know, addicted to food. We do need our food. Right. We don't need our carbs. Yeah. <laughs> we don't I mean, need I love steak. steak. Yeah. Oh, man. We had steak the other night. It was pretty good. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just so, you know, something... Something to think about. What about you, Emily? Are you struggling with, even though you're not moving no place, a room, living in a roommate, you know, part time? <laughs> How are you going to handle the different eating routines? Are you going to catch yourself falling into? I, to be fair, this probably sounds a little like uh, maybe self centered. No. I don't really have a hard time with the carbs if they're out in the house. Okay. Like you were saying, like yeah. no junk food, no problem. Like I'm not going to go out and buy something because one, I hate shopping. Yeah. I absolutely hate it. So I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I'll just drive 10 miles to Dollar General and get a bag of chips. Like I'm like, dude, that's such a waste of gas. <laughs> that's so dumb. But I'll I just eat pickles. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think I, if it's just, when it's just going to be me, I'm like a very simple eater. I'll probably just eat, you know, like <laughs> a chartreuse board, <laughs> just like Truth. random cold cut uh -huh. meats and stuff like that, pickles, kind of like what I take to lunch at mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I hope. Yeah. And you got all of us to reach out to both of you. So we could just encourage you to go buy the graham crackers and marshmallows and whatever, you know. Yeah. But, Carl. You mean pass by them, right? <laughs> 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 buy them. Not yeah, buy. Yeah. Buy. Yeah. Yeah. Buy. Yeah. Buy. Yeah. buy. Be buy. Don't go. Be you. Don't drool on them. And it comes <clears> good <throat> with that. Carl, oh. how are you doing with the when, word addiction? When oh, it comes as to soon as I said, I heard you say we're going to talk about food addiction, and then Dustin came on and listening to his voice, it really, it really hit home. You know, just I know Dustin. He's, he's got a big heart, and you know, I didn't know his full story. I still am piecing some together the more we get to know him. And then as I was listening to it, it just really touched me. Because I know how much of an addict I am when I'm emotional, like extreme emotions, I just want to go eat something and I'll, I'll just consume and I don't, I, it's not a chocolate. I can't substitute like, well, let's get a, a sugar free chocolate. That'll be good, Carl. No, because <laughs> I, it's the dopamine. Honey. I know what I'm looking for and that's not a hit. You know, I know I'm an addict. And I'm going to eat until I'm absolutely, completely crazy high on a sugar buzz. And I, so when I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, and I realized that when I am emotional, I need to breathe and walk away from whatever's going on because, you know, when I hit that, I just want to consume and it, and, it, and I'll just keep doing it. And, you know, then I'll get into a pattern of, of all kinds of stupid behaviors and of, of food addictions and not, you know, doing any of the other stupid stuff I used to do a long time ago, but. And I was um, going to ask you, did you replace alcohol or recreational drugs with food? You no, know, I didn't was do it, it that way, stone? but it, that was always there in the food. Another fallback. Yeah, but it wasn't, okay. you know, I didn't recognize it as something that I was doing as an a addiction until I had some perspective from my other, once I broke free from the other things. And then looking over later, especially when I was like, oh, I'll do keto with you. And I'm like, dang, this is rough, right? My first two weeks, and she's like, I know how to do it. I've been doing it for a year. And I'm like, shut up, right? I didn't want it. I, mean, I loved eating the meat. I love eating the cheese. I love, I'm, I, I can be super simple. But if I got emotional, I was like, get out of my way, you know, and I'd still, I'd go steal all the girls. The daughters would have cookies in the house and be like, they were gone. And they're like, dad ate them in the middle of the night, which is why I said, yeah. I want to make sure that I'm satiated before I go to bed. 
and that I'm that I'm well rested because if I do if I do especially in the very beginning now has that happened to me recently of course little bits and pieces I'd be like I really need a little bit right but I have to say that um, you're more like I need a fix uh, yeah I'm, I'm more like that and it, and it it breaks my heart to see what he went through and it makes me respect that I need to check myself a lot harder and say mm -hmm. no you don't go eat something healthy you're probably not even hungry right um, and I started thinking about that the cycle and you said um, the dopamine and the various things that go with it right so we've got the glucose and the dopamine and the cortisol when the stress goes but they all are related and one prompts the other and so you know we end up with with a uh, with a drop in sugars because of uh, the cortisol and the insulin release and then so then we do our body does tank and then we're like no I have to have it and that's all chemical but why did that stress happen in the first place why did I let that get to me and so I need to do, be more clinical and also just get the heck away from stupid stuff right period because I, I, I don't need to compromise because I know that as I'm headed into this spring, if I have sugars in my body, I will make it through the summer without any allergy meds. I know I will be completely messed up. My body will start breaking down again. I don't want to go back into that. So seeing that video and seeing Dustin and hearing him and his voice, it really touched me. And it made me say, check yourself, Carl. This and is what he did to me and then to Ken. It was like, we need, yeah, we need to let Dustin talk to all of us to really hear it in his voice. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you know, the food addiction thing may not affect me, but I've had other addictions in my life that that spoke to me on that level list. But don't want to go back to any of that. Generic addictions right, right. Yeah. and the dealing with it and what yeah. sets it off and... Um, you could think, oh yeah, I've been clean for X amount of years, and then all of a sudden that drink or whatever ends up back in your life, and it's like, <coughs> how? How did I let that happen? Yeah. And either you're going to backslide or turn it around right there at that time, and depending on what's going on here. Yeah. I had the opposite food addiction, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much food. Yeah. Too Not much. enough. Yeah. yeah. So... So, Evelyn, how do you do with food addiction? Or addiction, we don't even have to call it food addiction because there's so many things we could be addicted to in life that isn't good for us. I have two main things when it comes to food addiction. For me, I always practice restraint at the grocery store. My thing is if I don't buy it, I won't eat it. Yeah. However, recently they've been having all kinds of parties. In fact, I had a party at a uh, school yesterday and I bought everybody pizza and we had pizza and chips and juice and pop and cupcakes and all kinds of stuff. And so my thing was trying to get rid of, rid of as much of it at the school as possible. And everybody's like, well, uh, why aren't you sitting down eating? I'm like, I literally don't eat any of this. I just did this for you. Because I wanted to share my birthday party. Well, we had like six people within this week that all had birthdays at school that were on staff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I want it to be a huge party for all these people. And so I invited all of them and all of their coworkers and everything. Yeah. So we had a big party and I served pizza. There was several people that I found out don't eat pizza or don't eat certain things. And I was like, I... I want to pick your brain. I want to see what you do eat because I've always considered it a challenge when I find out what people do and don't eat. Um, long time ago, like long before I knew about keto, a friend of mine um, ran a, a ministry for University of Finley college kids from other cultures, other lands, other places, because it's a big universal uh, school. They come uh -huh. from everywhere. International international school they come from everywhere yeah they don't come from mars or anything <laughs> it's not so anyway but um all these people from different cultures have very restricted eating and the lady who ran it was she was so sweet she was like well i don't want to tell you all the restrictions because i'm afraid you won't make any food and 
I'd like to have something to serve. I said, give me all the restrictions. I'd rather have the challenge and be able to make something that they're willing to eat than serve you something that half of them aren't going to eat because right. it had cheese in it or it had something in it they aren't going to eat. And so she gave me the huge list and I I, I'm like, I will find food that fits <laughs> everyone's needs. And I did that for like a couple of years. We cooked for their little Bible study for yeah. their international Bible oh, study. So I like food challenges. And if I practice my personal restriction at the store, I don't bring it home. And I kind of label food in our house. Like when it comes in the door, it's like, well, that's not my food. Like if there are cupcakes in our house, I don't even consider that mine. I, I'm not tempted by it at all. Now, the other thing about food is my whole life, I've been on diet after diet after diet after diet. And I've been miserable. Food has made me miserable because I've always been fat. I've always been out of shape. I've always been in pain. And I've always hated food because if I do eat something that tastes good, it makes me feel guilty and unhealthy. And if I don't eat something for the flavor, if I'm eating it to make myself healthy, like a rice cake or brand cereal Ugh. or yada, 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 <laughs> number one, it tasted horrible. It made me miserable. It made me feel gross and lifeless. And why bother living if I have to eat this? So my other food mantra, idea, whatever I think about is at this point in my life, I could probably go carnivore or really strict ketovore and lose weight faster. But I am losing weight and getting healthy. But I'm also like, I spent 45 years being miserable with food. I don't want to be miserable. Now that I know I can lose weight or at least even maintain at the weight I'm at and enjoy food and make cakes, make fudge, make charcuterie, make all these different things and enjoy it, that's like a huge release for me okay. because I've always loved beautiful food. So I want to eat things that are pretty. But I also want to eat things that taste good to me. I don't want to go 100% carnivore because I've never enjoyed food my whole life. If it tasted good, I felt guilty and I was miserable and depressed. And if it didn't taste good, I mean, nobody enjoys that, right? So now I'm eating food that tastes good, that I enjoy, and that I am healthy to a point that I could stay here but I'm also still losing weight and I'm still being healthy and I'm still able to move more and enjoy my life and be a part of my life so so you found the happy medium in the two extremes yeah yeah so I'm not cutting everything out because I enjoy food I enjoy making beautiful food and I enjoy making tasty food that I can eat and still be healthy the what we noticed when we were, went back through a lot of things as she was starting keto we noticed that there were a whole lot of foods out there that that was the quote right foods as far as health professionals would say these are the right foods and she would eat those and they didn't help her lose weight they made her gain weight but she never ate high quantities or binged right it was just i'm eating and i'm gaining and this is not okay and so just to find the fact that ketosis and keto itself and that there's a certain type of eating pattern that is can can satiate and you know that was hope for the first time for her and that, and yeah. so as far as she never had like large quantities her portions were always comparable to the people who were skinny and that was what was really ticking her off because she used to be like, they're like, well, you shouldn't eat so much. Like, I would eat one, I would eat one thing and, and he would good. eat six and he was still one third my size. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't gaining at the time. But then later when I started slowing down and I ate even more junk, I gained a whole lot. And, you know, and I 
the, so it's just one of those things where it's hopeful for to find that right food for you, you know, and, and um, the, the addiction was different for, for Evelyn than it is for me. Me, I know when I'm addicted and I'm pursuing it out of, out of that crazy chaos and her, she's just like, I'm good. I don't need that crap. And I'm so happy that she's like that because then she can still function. Right? She's like, I can't even compromise on the oils because they're even worse yeah. than some of the other things. Right. So, and once you find that part of your body and I know it and I compromise because I'm an addict and I got to check myself. And so I'm, you know, I'm happy that she found that medium because it was difficult in the beginning. And what it. is that medium for Avalon? Isn't that medium for you, 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 right, or me? Right. You know, we Our eat, bodies are all we, just a little different. So yeah. we have to adjust it. And if I was to have food like this around, even having bacon and pork belly bites on the kitchen counter, I had to wrap them up, put them in the refrigerator out of sight because otherwise I would graze my way sure. through and I'd gain weight back. Right. Even though it's healthy keto food, right. I just can't have and normally it doesn't bother me i could eat one two meals a day and be happy and that's it and not need but this week it's been yeah wanting to and i know it's just love things that i'm going through in my life so but yeah trying to find our addiction and what sets it up and what will help it and so darren how are you on that deep end that we call addiction. I've known I was a food addict for years. Uh huh. I <coughs> I kind of came on to it back when I lived in Illinois uh, ten years ago or so. Whenever I started in helping my sister with their celebrate recovery program at the church. I figured I had to be in recovery for something, and my sister pointed out that you're, uh, that you know I was probably a food addict, and that's what I that's whenever I started accepting it. And thankfully, I used to I used to be one that would feed the addiction too much, and the many times I dieted under. At first, Atkins and stuff. I would always, I literally had a cheat day every Sunday. Yeah. I would get up, I would go, I would hit McDonald's on my way to church. I was serving at church and I'd hit one of the fast food places on the way home for lunch because I'd be there till noon, one o'clock, and I wouldn't want to go home and cook anything. And it was your day off. Yeah. So it didn't matter. Yeah. 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 And, I would have at least one cheat day a week and and I was I was at a my nephew's well both my nephews great nephews party this last uh, weekend and my my no my adult nephew Harley is his son was one of the birthday children uh, I was in, in there and I told them that I ate before I came because I knew what they were serving and I, you know, I didn't want to eat it because mm -hmm. it was not pure, it was not keto, it was sloppy <laughs> joes and I don't know well, everything that's in sloppy joe sauce but I'm <laughs> sure there's some sugar in yeah. there. Oh, yeah. oh yes, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> so he was like, well you know you can't have a cheat day every now and then and I just, I didn't even bother engaging with it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've played that game before. One right. cheat day leads to two cheat days. Right. And every time you cheat, it's that much easier the next time. Until all, of sudden, all of a sudden, you don't have it. All of a sudden, you're off your eating plan, and, and you're just back to what put you in the big jeans to start with. Right. Right. But I can really relate to Dustin. I was the kid in middle school in the big 2X shirts, probably size 40 pants, although they weren't under my belly. But... <laughs> And I was wearing the big sizes all through school. I was raised in a family that told you to clean, told you to clean your plate because there's some starving kid out there that couldn't have your food anyway. Right. right. I 
It wasn't until I was uh, quite mature that I realized, wait a minute, those kids in Africa didn't get my leftovers on my plate that I didn't eat, you know. Yeah. No matter if I sat there for two hours, they still, the dog still got it. <laughs> but I was bullied for my weight in school, and I used to eat my feelings before it. I, I would, it'd be nothing to come home and devour a bag of potato chips or something before dinner and then still eat a big dinner. But thankfully now, this time through on keto, I'm not, I live in a house with five people who eat not anywhere close to keto. My sister has been a godsend that even though I usually eat with them, she, she will cook me something special just for me so I don't have to make my food every every night but uh you know if she's making sloppy dough or something she'll save me out some meat make me a big hamburger or something but um but i'm not tempted this time by all the junk food that's in the house i used to before i got on keto this time she would keep fruit snacks in the house for my great nephew and i would graze through there and grab a couple of bags Every time I was in the kitchen, nearly, you know, home alone, nobody around, yep. you know, I would, or I, she would have pop tarts for the kids, and I'd grab pop, uh, pack pop tarts, and have pop tarts or something because I used to really like pop tarts. I still do really like pop tarts. Just don't eat them. <laughs> Why do you feel it's different? this time does it have to do with getting more fat and protein in i i literally don't know because i have never been one as long as i can remember who's ever been hungry uh -huh. i uh, i i i ate by a time clock and i've ate out of boredom uh -huh. but i've never i don't occasionally yes i i can't say I never get hungry occasionally yes i do get hungry right. if it's there are the rare occasions that yeah. I will actually feel the stomach growl and, and I'm ready to eat something, but it's usually whenever I've tried to skip a meal or something like that. But I it I I don't know why the cravings aren't there, but they're not. And I'm thankful for it. Because yes, I yes. live in a zone that would be easy to feed the cravings. Uh, there I'm, is. Hopefully. And I think for me, in your, if I was in your shoes, I would think most of that has to do with um, the recognition that you've done that before. You've, yeah. you've recognized yeah. now that yeah. one one cheat moment leads to a you know, cheat day, and a cheat day leads to multiples, and yeah. then misery and, and poor health. And, yeah. you know, uh, Evelyn always says, no, I, I was headed towards death. I, there's no reason to cheat. I don't want to go back down that road. And, you know... <clears throat> And that's the kind of stuff that, that I think to be successful, yeah. I need to recognize it's not worth the, the misery. And, and there's know. somebody out there that keeps saying, you know, if you call it a cheat day, it's a go off plan day, but cheat usually helps you get ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this cheat does not help you get ahead. No. No. This is a hindrance. It holds yeah. you back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a cheat day. You're not pushing yourself further further ahead like yeah. if you cheat on a test and or something and it's it's a hindrance it's even, yeah it's even worse than keto to cheat yeah. because you knock yourself out of ketosis right. with it right if you're and just on a low carb plan you're back into it. Yeah. you know yeah. if you cheat you know what's Absolutely. the big deal you eat less the next few days and you feel like you made it up even though right. you really didn't <laughs> exactly but yeah it's it's all about ketosis yeah. and well the other thing is that you Evelyn was reading a book a while back, and I don't even know what book it was, but you said, wait a minute, my leptins and ghrelins are off, and that's, those are the chemicals that let you know when you're satiated and, and when, you're, when hungry. you're hungry. Yeah. And if those were off all of your life because you didn't feel it because you ate for the other reasons or at a time clock, which we should eat when we're hungry, not at a time clock, yeah. and then you never know when what those feelings feel like until they get reset. And right now... Because you're in a full state, you know, of ketosis and you won't get yourself out of it, those are starting to work properly finally, but you still don't know what hunger feels like yeah. unless you're really desperate. And then yeah. you're like, oh, wait, that's what hunger feels like. Okay. So they're starting to reset. But yeah. it takes a while for those to reset. Yeah. The chemical creation has, 
They've been on schedule too. They've been off of well. Yeah. Um, I don't need to tell you because you eat on a time block and they turn off. Yeah. It was and about a year into keto that mine, I actually started to feel hunger in a different way. Feeling hungry on keto is not the same as feeling hungry before keto on the standard American diet. Right. The standard American diet, when I felt hungry, it was, like you said, above the neck kind of hunger. And yet, you know, your stomach would growl, but it, it was like a, it was like a two year old throwing a temper tantrum. Okay. I, I want like it because that. I want it. I want it because I want it. Right. You need to feed me now. Yeah. That's what it was like. Then when you switch over into keto, it was like, oh, I haven't eaten in a while. I feel hungry. <laughs> that was it. It wasn't like a feed me now kind of an urgent. I have to have it. Yeah. That's, it that's when you know you broke the addiction cycle. You really recognize it for the first time. I know that like when Ken and I first got together and I had started, I was on keto for, I don't mean six weeks or, you know, thereabouts when we first start. And he would say, oh, not my arms, you know, and my hangries would hit me. I was yeah. still six weeks into keto, still craving, mm -hmm. and like, I gotta eat food now. But I was doing really dirty keto starting out. And of course, I lost weight because I had so much weight to lose. And, but now those hangries don't get me. I will occasionally, like yesterday, I got hungry. I felt like I needed nourishment for my body not like oh i gotta eat i haven't eaten for a long time and he's not pulling his arms back like i'm gonna take them on like the tricky dumb stick or something <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah. um but understanding this week the emotional cravings has been really rough <clears throat> on me it's like i've gone backwards on why I'm craving food and it's like no my body doesn't need it for the nourishment to make my body healthier my brain needs it to soothe things going on in my life and that's all the wrong reasons because once that comes to pass I'll just be pissed off at myself that I fell for that old story that the old me used tell me yeah so um and emotional eating addictions Whew. i can tell you Derek, like you i can relate to dustin growing up in school because the older i got the wider i became and uh but once I graduated high school, I went into the service and got rid of all that. Now, growing up, being very poor, one, one parent eating, I'll tell you, that last 10 days of lunch kind of sucked. It was either salad, lettuce, or toast, or bacon grease, but it was something. But it was never enough. So I would sit there. I'd shoe shine, set pins, unload trucks, did what I had to do to help my mother out. And money. this, excuse me, this is from the age of nine, nine on. Um, helping out my house with money and knew that the food wasn't always there. I take my five dollar bill and go hit Royal Castles. Royal Castles was a place like White Castle, but a whole lot better. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait a oh, like go this. get too many burgers loaded, fries, milkshake, and all that for what a buck ten or something. I don't know what it was, but I used to pig out. I used to pig out like that, and until well, I moved out on my own after the service, um, knowing what it was to do things. Don't run out of food and have shoes up. Those were missing a lot in my life as a kid. Um, but when I did make a good earning, I went out to a restaurant. I ate everything and anything. I pigged out. I pigged out whenever and however I could because I, and, and I, 
it wasn't emotional either. It was where I didn't have it as I was younger. I got it now. I'm eating. Right. So did it come? Did it come from a spirit of fear of ever going back to a place where you wouldn't have it again, or did it come from a spirit of like a a hoarding mindset? Because I didn't have it then, I'm gonna take as much as I can now. Yep. Or that's exactly what okay. it was. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Um, I I know once I gotten older in life and just kept watching the weight pack on and pack on. Um, I, I just, like I said, I, I, when I met you, what was I doing? I was eating anything and everything I wanted and how much I wanted because it, it, from here out, it, it was the cards. I, I'd go and buy them little miniature candy bars, two bags like that. A couple weeks later, I'm buying two bags again, you know, and Whatever else garbage I'm putting in my life. <laughs> but I, I swore to myself I wouldn't go without food. I'm going to pick out and I would not go without shoes. And um, we won't say how many pairs of shoes he owns. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> but, but if you know, it came I, from a place of living in a time in your life when you had to make shoes out of duct tape or old tires or whatever or go without i mean i understand the fear and the hoarding i understand both of those because i do that i um it's not always food for me though. <laughs> <laughs> well, i i didn't believe a person could be hooked on sugar and the public that i worked with i've seen all kinds of addiction 12-step programs been in them with them to help people go through these things i have it in my family um i'm sure i've probably walked down them steps too sometimes in my life but i the the sugar i never thought that would be like alcohol drugs well it's the worst drug that i could ever imagine because learning more and more being eating uh proper human diet i, I have learned so much about what not to put in my body anymore and to eat clean and the way i lost weight wasn't the way but i needed to be um healthy i needed to learn the way to eat healthy and and i did i i thank my wife for that and a lot of dr ken's videos <laughs> <laughs> one right after another which was good because you got to prove something and the way he kept saying, and the way he kept saying, the more I kept, he got me thinking, you know, what's going on here. And the more I keep looking and learning how, you know, read the boxes, read, turn it over, read what's in things, read what's in then learning what sugar is, what, what, I mean, I knew how to flip flop carbs because I did that roller coaster, South Beach, different diets, or fooling myself like, okay, you don't eat the unrich bread, but you eat the whole wheat. Wait. I was doing that, full of myself again, you know, but. But you had been taught that was what was healthier. Yes, at the time, but yep. I, I, <laughs> I will not turn back to clock. I feel, I, I always say this, and you probably heard me say it, I, I feel better. I'm almost 65 at 64 than I was at 46. Mm -hmm. um, and today, I'm just glad that I, I've learned about what, not to put in my body because of sugars and the carbs and like i said i never knew i was that addicted to sugar and it's hard it's hard at times walking in the stores and i, I told stacy this most of the time i'm good but i know there's a corner in that store i don't like called by because i just leave it at the little voices like <laughs> yeah. just, one, just one You've been there. I know you've been there. I've heard you say daily. just one. I'm not daily, but I'm just glad I don't have to put myself in that place mm -hmm. on a daily basis. But yeah, yeah I um, and then learning about a bridge. You know, the, the, take your mind off of things. I, I don't mind drinking coffee in here with a little element because I need electrolytes. Okay, raspberry chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Just put it in there. There's your bridge. And it mm -hmm. seems to work for me. But 
food with sugars. But now is, and I'm just using that because I do the same thing and I question myself. Am I, am, am you? Am you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Are you substituting that need, that head hunger craving for sweet chocolate and raspberries or whatever with the element and saying, okay, the element's okay. Is that like, Oh, it's keto food. It's okay if I eat it. Therefore, I graze by nibbling <laughs> on foods. Um, you know, where do we learn? It's part of our addiction that we're eating for to feed that raspberry chocolate craving yeah. versus just filling up, eating to live, not living to eat. Evelyn and I were talking about that just the other day, about substitutionary foods. Well, I have to have something that looks and tastes like a potato. Why? <laughs> because I love potatoes. Do you? Really? Okay. Well, potatoes were killing you, so maybe you just need to eat the rat or radish for what it is, knowing that it's not a substitute potato. It's got a different flavor, spice it, herb it. Make it different and don't call it a flipping potato. Yeah, you know, it's not a faux nothing. It right. is a radish. Yes. It is a radish. Yeah. You know? Rice. Oh my gosh, All cauliflower rice. You shut up about the cauliflower rice, people. I'm saying this for the video. Shut up about the cauliflower rice. Eat cauliflower for cauliflower and don't eat rice. Right. That's uh -huh. it. You know, but spice it the way you want to spice it, but you don't have to make it taste like something that was familiar to be a crutch. If that's what gets you through to the next step, okay, maybe in the beginning. But that's dirty. That's real dirty keto because you keep doing it to a point where you're like, well, I gotta have something that tastes and is so familiar to the other thing. Yeah, you're not or thinking. you could not, you're not right? And that. break the cycle because I know, and that's what I said. There's no substitute. I can't get a, a sugar-free chocolate and make it make sense to my brain. No. There's no way I can use that bridge. That to me is stupid. You can eat Go eat lots the of sugar free chocolates and it messes you up. Yeah, because when I I didn't know, okay, that's a whole personal <laughs> story. I didn't know. So my dad gave her a box of Dietz's chocolate. It was sugar free. I didn't read the warning on the side I said, of the box. This is nasty. I don't want it. <laughs> I was like, you know, I got to eat the chocolate. Well, the way I eat chocolates and the way she eats chocolates has always been different. She eats very delicious, very expensive chocolate, one tiny piece. Once a month, she'll keep a dang box Once in there for two years still, in the freezer. I still have good items from before I went. <laughs> so, but in I my refrigerator. I know I'm not allowed to touch it. But my point is, if I eat chocolate, I eat it till it's gone in one sitting. That's it. Well, I did that to her sugar free, and I was on the crapper for three days, oh. and I had oh so much pain. Oh. I did not know, and now I know sugar free oh. is not acceptable as an alternative. Oh. <laughs> you don't get a sugar buzz, and you're on the toilet. So not a good substitute. The bridge is not worth it either in many cases for me. That's just me yeah. speaking out. You yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no, that you know, that is that's how you can and cannot handle yeah. that for your addiction. And that's like when people it's talk a trigger for me. Moderation. And I know my son has, you know, on his Facebook pay everything in moderation. He's not an addict. He's never dealt with taking one hit of Coke or, you know, he drinks, but not, you know, he's a social drinker, whatever. He's fights with 40 pounds, but when he sets his mind to it, that it's got to go, it goes. Mm -hmm. um, um, on, on Dustin's page, he had a video not too long ago when he was asking people, are you a abstainer? Or moderator. Right. Abstainer or moderator. Some people have to 100% abstain mm -hmm. from something yeah. in order to be healthy. And other people can moderate. Yeah. And something that's just come to my realization is, of course, you know, I've gotten up. I got off all the flowers, the grains. I have no problem with that anymore. But I did. Um, do the quesadilla hour oh, we lived on quesadillas probably six for six months we were together anything could go in a quesadilla but it was still grains you know low fat, 
And then I realized, oh, whole oh, carbs. You know, you're not counting net carbs. You know, I'm doing total carbs. And, you know, the learning process. But now I have no desire to have flour, any grains. But I was using a lot of almond flour and um, nut butters. And I accidentally made some nut butter. Yeah, you guys were here that day. Um, I had a jar of mixed nuts and I wanted to grind them up to use them um, as chunkies, maybe in his ice cream or something. Anyways, it didn't take long and it just turned into butter. So yeah, he's got a jar of nut butter. But I have come to the realization I now have a reaction to the nut flowers, the nuts. Yeah which I never knew, but when your body hurts and aches from other foods, you're feeding it, yeah, or you're food. abusing it with so many other there things. There's no almond flour in your birthday cake. Oh, thank you. Then to, you know, narrow it down that, no, nope, I know now that sets off a certain trigger point that's not worth the, the pain of yeah. eating nuts. Not worth the pain. Yeah. So... Um, but until you start nitpicking those little details, fine tuning the addictions, the biggest thing was to just break the addiction. But now I'm fine tuning. Recognizing the things that should be okay, mm -hmm. but they're not for me, for my body. Yeah. So, and can I eat something, what was it, I don't remember in the last week, and your hands were swollen, you couldn't make a fist, oh, that he realizes, uh, it's not worth eating that anymore. That happened to somebody with broccoli not too long ago I was talking to, and they it said, yeah, I had a little broccoli. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. yeah. I, just, I don't eat broccoli either. No, he, he did find out that. broccoli did he, that yeah, to him. Yeah, he swelled up, and yeah. that's after... Triple B and E. I went back and tried the broccoli. Yeah, <laughs> I love broccoli too. So it doesn't look good uh, anymore. Yeah. I can't remember what I ate this last week that made me swell up like that. It was something. You remember? I was just trying to remember. We, yeah, about you too. we talked about it this week. Um, yeah. They came over and helped us put. They helped us. They basically did them, but <laughs> um, uh, raised garden beds. Put eight of them together, or two by two by yeah. four raised metal garden beds, and um, moved all the dirt to go in them and everything. The three of them worked away, and I worked in my tea garden, as I call it. I raised buckets over here by the shed that I have all the mint and the chamomile and everything. And that mint is super strong. He walked, he walked past me, just holding the. I was like, <gasps> the dried mint yeah, that was left like, over from yeah, last I'm year. So awesome. I was like, <laughs> Those are three different kinds. Right there there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I love our mint. Yellow in containers are, it's all over. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we had it in one spot and he tried to get rid of it in that spot and put it in a different spot. And the dog a, on a, it. Yeah, we got a good spot for it, but the dog still, she comes in smelling fresh, refreshed because she'll go lay on the mint. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, oh, don't you smell all minty? <laughs> well, I had started it, I had brought it from Cincinnati because I'd had it in planters there to go, not necessarily to eat, but I had it with chives and stuff for yeah. the pretty arrangements in the big planters. And then when we moved here, we bought it here. And then the pots started disintegrating, so I just threw it into the garden and got rid of the little pots. Well, then I didn't want it there in the garden, and I threw it over against the house in the herb side. So now I've got mint there, mint there, and now out in the mint garden. So we'll see how well it all works. But anyways. Um, There's more. Go ahead. Oh, I can't. Why? Why? I have to take uh, take something. Oh, you take it home to, with you. I have to have a gap. And I'm at, I'm at a high medicine gap. Yeah, but I have to have a gap. Yeah. All this fun stuff of getting old and worn out. Yeah. I don't know about the old and worn out part, but I take <laughs> all the fun stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, any other thoughts and whatevers? 
Um, and like I said, we'll meet again next week. And then after that, we're going to be kind of hit and miss. But um, I'd like for us to all get together for, you know, in a, depending on how I'm doing, how he's doing, try to take care of me. Because, right. you know, and um, do I mean, we barbecue here all the time and whatever. We'll have to go to Maryland or wherever it is. Why not? Well, you know, <laughs> road you, trip you, it. We'll be in Annapolis and have seafood. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's so good. good. <laughs> I don't want to brag about it guys. Yeah. Well, it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. They bring this bucket of just nothing but seafood, literally. Everything. Like 15 or 20 different kinds. Yeah. And you're just like, what is this? I don't care. It's a seven minute so thing. Yeah. Yes. But I still think that during this time, or in between semesters even, I think we all need to have something we're working towards. Just um, a little extra something where we're really applying ourselves to, um, like, I have my Bible verse on. I'm not a very good at memorizing things. And so the Bible verse that I'm trying to learn and apply to my life, I have printed on the front of my refrigerator. I have it in my purse. I have it in, oh, probably the bottom of the washing machine because it was in my pants pocket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, by next weekend, I will come up with something else that I just really want to try to focus on and not call it, oh, I'm not going to eat this. So, you know, it's not going to be a foodie thing sure. during our downtime. But then when we do come back for our next 13 week program, I do, I have now graduated from one of the. They're not called semesters. I've gotten another certification and I'm working out towards my next thing. Congratulations. Thank you. But my next thing will be actually what I'm studying is about setting up like intake forms and really counseling in group therapy and or individual getting to know the deep and what sets people off and so again like i've told you all before you're my betty better study group mm -hmm. and so i think i will when i we come back to start meeting regularly i will start working on establishing it that way so you guys are all going to get free services at that level <laughs> But um, I think it'll be interesting with some of the forms that they have um, to really work through them together as a group. Again, to do just soul searching because when I first started out this group, we were more focused on what you can eat, what you can't eat, counting this, count, you know, and I don't count anything myself. Um, and I think we all know what we're doing in that department. But to really coordinate our brain, mm -hmm. our soul, and our gut, yeah. I think that is what our group does best. So, but anyway, so any other thoughts on upcoming goodies and um, ideas? When we have Thursday night meetings and Andrew is gone, if his schedule allows, I'd like to have him on our Zoom call for the evening. Um, and, you know, we could do that with anybody else who can't make meetings for one reason or another to try to keep everybody involved. Because I know myself, I'll drift. I, it would, having done things like, I won't say like this before, but like I had worked for Weight Watchers. I'm a lifetime member of Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. Ironic thing was when I worked for Weight Watchers, I, I was living in Nashville and I worked in the office there taking fielding calls and getting people to sign up, 
And I had lost 85 pounds doing Weight Watchers in Anchorage, Alaska before we got transferred to Nashville. And so working for them in the office, I was to brag up. I had lost 85 pounds on Weight Watchers and how it was easy to do. But I could not mention to anybody I had gained back 100 pounds by then. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was wow. part of their, yeah. So as far as anybody I was talking to on the phone, I was down 85 pounds. Not that I was up 100 pounds. Wow. Yeah. The mental games that not only was I playing with them, but when I played with myself. Yeah. You're so, definitely the best torturers of self. Yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And we started watching um, Carrie Mann um, rehashing Oprah's new thing about she's severed her ties with Weight Watchers, you know, but she's made, well, what, I don't remember, someone. yeah, gobs of money and yeah, why she's doing it, but now she's selling, supporting, I don't know, injections or something. Mm -hmm. Anyways. 